Sunday morning, we go to church. We go to healing place, and Pastor Mike was given a sermon about favor. At some point, he was saying, there's somebody in the room that needs to hear this. You need to open that construction company. Ty and I were standing next to each other, and I grabbed her leg, and we looked at each other like, did he just say that? Are you kidding? And I'm like, uh, just frozen. Like, it did, like there's, there's no way that just came out of his mouth. Oh, my goodness. You know? And so we walked out of there almost like zombies. We would like to thank our title sponsor, B1 Bank. B1 Bank knows that entrepreneurs like you are always thinking one step ahead. So you need banking solutions that can keep up. It begins with lending. Does your business need working capital or financing for new equipment? How about a real estate or a construction loan? Good news. The B1 Lending Team is ready to learn your goals and help you find the best lending option available. Now let's talk about uncomplicating your daily cash flow. B1 offers a full array of treasury management services that let you collect funds faster pay funds more efficiently, and access your information with powerful online tools. Most importantly, B1 understands the value of working with local nonprofits to build a stronger community. They believe in giving back through hands-on involvement with their B1 community outreach program because it's simply the right thing to do. B1 Bank. Be uncomplicated. To learn more, visit B1Bank.com. Equal housing lender. Member FDIC. Hello, I'm Andrew McClendon, your host of the Next Entrepreneur Podcast. We're here today in the Propel Production Podcast Studio in Baton Rouge. And we welcome our guest, Mr. Nathan Orso, founder and owner of Oasis Spaces. Nathan, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I appreciate it. It is really cool to have you here. We work together, Mm -hmm. and I've seen you grow a great company, and I'm very proud of you. Uh, I've been able to follow your progress, but maybe even more so because of social media, right? which is a great thing. But also on top of that, Nathan, is get to see how you're growing your family. Oh, yeah. You've got a beautiful wife, so congrats to you uh, and uh, Tanya on growing a beautiful family. We share in common that we are fathers of three daughters. It's a beautiful thing. It is an absolutely (laughs) exceptional gift in life. It's wonderful. Congrats on rocking that. So why don't we start with you telling us what all Oasis Spaces does. Yeah, Oasis Spaces, uh, we're a home builder and pool builder. Do a little bit of uh, outdoor kitchen work, uh, outdoor living areas, stuff like that. That's where it kind of started. But So it's, it's it's an outdoor living and pool business that has now grown into doing more homes, more residential, higher end customs. Yeah. And if you look at Oasis Space's website, which is really nice, nicely done, Thanks. you see some beautiful images mm-hmm. of just some really fantastic homes as well as, like you said, the outdoor living spaces. Right. And I mean, it looks like that's good living. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the idea. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. And the thing I was taking back, uh, uh, by your website is the passion of the reviews that have been posted there people really raving about uh, your service and uh, i think that's a fantastic thing but a common thread in that nathan that i saw was the people that wrote these reviews were were able to say like from the first meeting we knew nathan was our guy right and you know timely responses and stuff Mm -hmm. like that that's really cool and I know that's at the root of your success, so uh, congrats on that. 2018, uh, named LSU 100 uh, in the list of uh, top 100 fastest-growing companies, which was a fantastic uh, acknowledgement. And then this year, big deal, made the list of the Inc. 5,000 fastest-growing companies coming in at uh, 2186. So, dude, that's a big deal. <laughs> congrats on that, man. Thanks. A lot Thanks. of hard work. Yeah. Yeah. How did that make you feel when you when you found out that you made that list? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, you know, I'd never, early on, I, I never thought that would happen, ever, ever have an opportunity to have, yeah. you know. In my world, I feel like, I mean, the company's been going for about nine years now. Yeah. So, 
I feel like it's been a slow process. I mean, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's a grind every single day, you know. And then, you like these, my, you like my friend miles. says, you, you you get up and chop wood every day, yeah, right? You just yeah. keep you just keep going at it. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like you just keep growing it, and you feel like it's kind of going slow when you're in the moment sometimes. But you look back every couple of years, or you know, every year or whatever. You look back from the previous year, and you go, "Wow, wow, we, this, we're we're growing again. We've done more this year than we did last year, and then you, the next year you do it again. You're like, "Wow, did more this year than we did last year." And yeah, it's just it, it, it's it's grown. Like I said, I, I feel like it's slow. And you look over nine years, but when you look from where I was nine years ago to where I am today, yeah, exponentially. You yeah, know, that's it, fantastic. It grown, you know, so, so, do you and your wife Tanya do a good job of celebrating those moments? Oh yeah, we'll pop over a bottle of champagne. You know, yeah. when, when, when we get things like that, we'll go out to eat together and kind of do a little celebration. Yeah. So you know, it's family business. So it's just she and I. You know, we got a couple of helpers that help us out, and so yeah, we take time to 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 kind of reflect and look back. And you know, every every few months we get to say. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, like, Good look, for y'all. Look, look at this little thing. Look, it's yeah. easy in the grind of things to just keep grinding. Mm-hmm. And I think that stopping and, and, and smelling the roses and it right. is an important part of the process. Right. And uh, I don't know that I ever did that very well. Right. I'm glad to hear that you are. But that, you know, making that Inc. Uh, 5000 list yeah, is... You- you have it's to, a moment to celebrate. You have for to sure. apply for it first, you know. So oh, sure. why, you know you put your, your name in the hat and see yeah, what happens. And exactly. It kind of gives you a, a reason to stop and go. Okay, if you if you get that award, then you can say, okay, I got that award. Then yeah. it gives give you a, mom, a moment to pause yeah. and, and, but and all, think about it and, and, and reflect. It makes a statement about your business, right? I mean, so you you could just keep grinding, or uh, you could put your name in the hat. And take the time to do that work to, you know, make your best case. But when you do that and you get that recognition, it puts a brand of approval on your business, mm-hmm. the LSU 100, that, yeah. you know, on, on your website. It's those are meaningful, uh, you know, marks. So, how do you and uh, Tanya split your division of labor there? Who does what? Right. I basically control from the off upper management kind of things, you know, I'd meet with the customers initially and kind of do it through, you know, the initial sales presentations and then start managing the business as it comes in, sign the contracts, get everything organized, ordered, you know, square everything away. Tanya takes things kind of from there to a certain extent. She, you know, she does um, a lot of design work. So, Mm -hmm. She will meet with the customer at that point. Like if we're building a custom home, she'll meet with the customers and kind of get an idea of what they're looking for, help them pick out their tiles or colors or countertops, you know, those kind of things. If, if it's a pool, kind of same deal. Coping, you know, the tile and coping, colors. Right, right. You know, what kind of styles they're looking for. And then sometimes, you know, I just, again, kind of get buried down into the day-to-day stuff and I just need help, you know, communicating to it to a customer taking care of customer issues or warranty issues and like sometimes i just need her to say hey go meet with the customer you know this is what's been going on let's see where we can you know how you can try to fix it you know right. just let me know what i need to do you know yeah. so she kind of take over the customer service and design uh, accounting aspects. how is that happening uh i have a, a third-party bookkeeper yeah yeah so she took it so that. you're doing all estimating, mm-hmm. all project management, yeah. supervision. I have a hired a, a superintendent, yep. a project manager uh, about a year ago. You know, I was getting to the point where it was too busy. Like I was, I was wearing all the hats. I yeah, know, yeah. And for you know, last nine years, I've always worn all the hats. Right, it's, right. It's a hard transition to kind of let go. On, oh, yeah. You know, and say, Absolutely. okay, like, I, I have control of everything when you're wearing all the hats. Like, right. I know every single in and out of everything. But it got overwhelming right. real quick, you know. And as, as the business has grown, you got to start, you know, delegating more and these kind of things. And the first person I reached out to was my wife. I was like, you are the salesperson. You can talk to a wall. I mean, you, you, are the, you are the one that I need to be out there, you know, meeting new customers if we need to or you know following up you know those kind of things yeah and she was you know if i could have hired anybody it would have been a person just like her yeah. so i'm like well, why don't you just do it 
and yeah. Yeah, <laughs> everything it, it kind of came out uh it, it kind of happened in a, in a good timing that's cool you know, though i mean we needed yeah. we needed each other i needed her to help and and so uh so she was my first real hire <laughs> yeah. but what's what's really interesting about that i think and particularly in the work that y'all do you know when you look at the outdoor kitchens and how beautiful they are and the pools are just stunning in the homes it's a creative product right and it just seems like it's so much more of an interesting business to be in with a spouse than if you're just yeah. you know manufacturing widgets right right, right. you know it's like right. there's to me that's exciting it seems like you'd have a lot of pride working together and and creating that product so that's really cool you're from baton rouge right baton rouge originally lsu graduate graduate lsu in 03 construction oh, management construction management and then you headed out of town right i took the first first interstate out of here yeah <laughs> and you headed where well actually i flipped a coin when i when i did like the the week i graduated it was in december of 03 and i said all right i gotta get out of town you know let's go try something different i've been in baton rouge all my life Let's see what happens. And I'd been to Austin, Texas one time, and I've been to Destin, Florida many times, you know, and I was like, I love both those places. I'm kind of familiar with them both. I love them both. I literally flipped a coin and said, really? well, let's go and I landed on whatever. I guess it was heads. Uh, so I went to Destin first. No kidding. Just to, just to see what was Did going you on. have uh, an opportunity there? You no. went there to find it? No, nope. I literally just, just got on the interstate, got a, got a resume, printed a bunch of copies, put a suit on, and had a list of 10 or 15 builders that I got off the internet and just started knocking on doors. That's fascinating. And so your mindset was to start in residential? Yeah, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, 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 and Dustin, you know, at that point, that was, you know, three early 04. Yeah, I mean. Things were booming. Uh, things were going crazy. Just on fire, so, right? Uh, yeah, I'd gone through a whole day of, you know, meeting builders and looking for jobs and stuff like that, cold calling. And uh, I think it was on the second day, like kind of late in the afternoon, I kind of got on the downhill slide of everybody that I met. One, one of my last ones on, on my list. You'd been re you'd been rejected for two days much, straight. Pretty much. Oh yeah, I was uh, looking for anything. You know, just, well, you know, again, I was just there for interviews. You know, I was right. just there to kind of get some traction, see what was going on. Right. The next weekend, I was going to go to Austin. So, <laughs> you know, uh, but but on that last interview, I uh, walked into the office at BRW Builders. Tim Shores interviewed me. Real quick, and he was like, "You're what I'm kind of what I'm looking for, you know. Let me let me call you tomorrow, you know." And I uh, went back home with a little with a little, you know. Uh, there's a possibility here, yeah. And uh, called him back the next week. I went back over there the next week and talked to the other the other owners and met everybody, and they offered me a job right there. And I was like, "Well, I guess I'm packing my bags, going to Destin." And what kind of home building were they doing? Uh, it's all high end residential, mostly beach houses, mostly vacation homes. Oh wow! And so we're talking about houses. You know, there had a bunch of houses all the way up and down Thirty A. Was all we were building on. So it was, you know, watercolor, water sound, um, almost Rosemary Beach. So we did some houses in uh, in Alice Beach in its, in its very infancy. Um, so seaside area. So we built many houses in the time that I was there. <laughs> Yeah, so you cut area. your teeth on some fine stuff because uh, watercolors so. and and of uh, course seaside and all that, but particularly taken with watercolors and, mm -hmm. and but that's a fantastic story about that whole development. You oh, know, yeah. Yeah. Saint Joe. Uh, yeah, they, they did a they done a great job. They have yeah. done a great job. Yeah, I mean, like I said when I when I first got there, there were a couple of houses we were building there in the seven hundred thousand dollar range, and you know. As the economy grew and and, the, and more people were building, more people were buying lots, those numbers skyrocketed. Yeah, you know, and I can, we were building millions of dollars in houses. You know, yeah, I can remember the lots in watercolor would just be like a postage stamp, mm -hmm. and they're like eight hundred thousand dollars for oh, yeah. a lot before they put a house on it. Right. You know, so they were spending a lot more than that uh, on their home. How long were you in Florida? Five years. Five years. Five years. Now, had you met Tanya by this time? I actually I met her on my going away party when I was leaving Baton Rouge to go move to Florida the night 
uh, well, three days. Two, you two, were the, two, three nights before I left. You were a Eddie. man of mystery. Yeah. He's leaving. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we, met, we met at the catering uh, on Monday night, and I, was, I already had the U-Haul ready to go on Thursday afternoon. I was packing my stuff and leaving, leaving on Friday, and we met that night. Basically, been together ever since. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Did she follow you to Florida? Not initially. Yeah. You know, I was, like, I was moving. We just met like, literally right, the week right. before. But, but I mean, but at but, some point, she yeah, followed yeah. you to Florida, yeah, well, right? You, it's, it's amazing. You, you, you get to know somebody real well when you, and you have a kind of a, an only phone conversation yeah. relationship yeah. for a month or two before she yeah. ever even came down to visit, you know, until the next time we saw each other. Yeah. So we we got in a, we were talking hours and hours on the phone. This is back ah, back so in the sweet. flip this is back in the flip phone days. You yeah. Know? So that, that 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 first cell phone bill was strong, <laughs> you know. Uh, so we we wore out the, the, this flip phones talking every night, you know, hours and just like you know like you're in high school, you know. We just yeah. got to know each other really really well, and we visited, and you know, eventually she decided, you know, after a few months, six months, or whatever it was, she she moved down. Oh yeah, man! Like I said, what a great story! You really cut your teeth on some good stuff in uh, as far as residential home building, right? Florida, that's, right, right. That's I mean that's how I was trained. Yeah. Is is super high end. Yeah, you know, um, very very detail oriented, very high end. You know, materials, workmanship. That's all I knew. That's all I knew. You know, and so timing wise. Did you you came back to Baton Rouge? You came back and worked uh, for my companies. Mm-hmm. Is that when things were starting to slow down? I, I'm trying to well, remember. That's, that's basically how it happened. I mean, yeah. like I said, early 2004 is when I started. Yeah, yeah. So five years later, 2008, 2009. Yeah, and it was crashing. So yeah. I saw, you know, from I guess what we'll call maybe base level construction over there to skyrocketing. I mean, like. Fast, 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 you know, everything was just going crazy right. to a screeching halt. Screeching halt. And so at uh, that, that time, by that time, yeah, five years, I'd, we'd had our second child, and we we're second daughters out there, and we we're sitting there going, okay, the economy's going down. We have two kids. We live in Florida. It's time to move home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how we connected. Mm-hmm. And maybe you responded to an ad mm-hmm. uh, we were running. You came back and came to work for our companies, and we were in commercial building construction, right? So right. you engaged in that as a project manager, right. and I remember you ran our generator business mm-hmm. for a while. A- after one of the storms, we started a, a generator uh, leasing business, right. and I remember you did a couple of big sales, big, big generators, uh, multi-million dollar Right. deals and then we had some I, I remember the uh state of louisiana after this one storm i can't remember do you ever remember what yeah, storm? it must have been gustav gustav yeah it must have been gustav. but the the state had bought 30 million dollars worth of generators if i remember correctly and it was about 330 range yep 330 different generators mm-hmm. and they shipped them all over the state right and i remember they shipped them generators and then some cable right but they didn't they it, they didn't really get deployed right because they was there were no transfer switches on these facilities right, right? so if you they're all they're all portable generators so right. they're on you know you pick up and move them but they were you know commercial style size yeah. generators and all different sizes and yet, they they weren't on trailers they mostly, weren't on mostly wheels. not they were uh, free I think maybe just a couple of them ended up on trailers yeah. but no, they're all freestanding that's right. Uh, so the generators really didn't get used. They no. didn't get deployed. No, so no. so we weren't involved in that contract, right. but our contract was to go and pick them all up. Mm-hmm. After the storm had settled and people had, you know, power started coming back on, the generators really didn't get used. And our job was to go pick them all up from all over South Louisiana, as I recall, right. and then take them to a facility that we leased and fill, uh, fill them up with those generators and then maintain them and load bank them and, mm-hmm. and then that was a big deal but then the recession hit my business like a ton of bricks right. i think uh after three years or so i had to escort uh, a number of personnel out of the door right right <laughs> and uh you talk about wearing multiple hats mm-hmm. at that time i had to uh 
we, the, the remaining employees had to do a lot of that. So yeah, we were, um, we were all double teaming, triple teaming. Yeah, we were, all, we were all. It was all hands on deck. Yeah, we all. You know, I was had my hands in generators for you know for a few hours a day. Then all of a sudden, I'm managing a you know construction project. You know, in new roads on the yeah. same day. You know, two yeah. completely different things, but. Yeah, you, know, you just do what you gotta do. Yeah, and that's kind of how we like to operate here. Yeah. But you ultimately, uh, and you know, I had to let employers go, and I hate to see you go, but uh, that was one of the realities of the recession as it hit my business. But you moved on. Now you got. I mean, you came to me with a wife and two kids, and you kind of. I think we're still in that position. And now I had. Now I had the third one, probably. That, yeah, I had a third at that, at that point. Yeah, yeah, third one, and uh, so those were brutal days, but. You moved on, and uh, what did you do after that? That's when I started working for Simpson Strong Tie. So uh, it's a manufacturer of all little metal components that go into residential homes. So joist hangers, uh, hurricane ties, anchors, those kind of things. And I was their state sales rep, so I covered territory from Beaumont, Texas, to like Meridian, Mississippi. So you, you did some traveling? I did some traveling. Ran, so you're, ran and, and you're doing a lot of sales to multifamily builders as well it was a little less in the in the builders but more in the retail markets so like home store uh you know oh, building okay. supply stores oh okay so um i got you know, locally it'd be like homes and stuff like that okay um and so i called on all those sales reps and did trainings and you know stock the shell show you know the new 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 stuff you know all the new uh items that were coming out um so i was kind of the 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 go to guy with all the the home centers. Yeah, uh, I center remember centers. running to you into you uh, a few times mm-hmm. uh, throughout those years, and uh, you were always moving and shaking. Oh yeah, Hennis T. Bourgeois provides accounting services, litigation support, as well as tax and assurance services to companies and individuals throughout the region, with offices in Baton Rouge, Denham Springs, New Orleans, and Hammond. Their team of professionals have a wide range of specialized expertise and give personalized attention to each client they work with. HTB serves all types of business structures, including corporations, private businesses, startups, individuals, and more. So call them today to learn how they can help you. Reach out to them by phone or learn more at their website, www.htbcpa.com. A little testimonial here. HCB has been my accounting firm for over 30 years and have guided my initial company from startup to expanding to numerous operating companies. HCB has provided guidance in helping us expand across the U.S., doing business in more than 30 states. Flat out, HCB has made all the difference in the world to our business. This podcast is sponsored by NAI Ladder & Bloom, Louisiana's leading commercial real estate firm offering expertise in every discipline, including office, industrial, retail, multifamily, and corporate services. Their agents guide you through the real estate process from start to finish, using a host of marketing, prospecting, and analytical technologies. As leading entrepreneurs, your valuable time and resources should align with the most trusted name in commercial real estate, NAI Ladder & Bloom. Learn how they can work for you at www.ladderbloom.com. Turnkey Solutions is a nationwide cybersecurity and IT systems expert, providing the services that growing businesses need to stay ahead of hackers, hurricanes, and IT nightmares. With 24-7 support teams and offices across Louisiana and Texas, they bring peace of mind to companies of all sizes. Their five-star rated team provides lightning-fast IT support with the cybersecurity and business continuity solutions today's businesses demand. When you're looking for a technology partner to provide you with peace of mind, find out more by calling them at 225-224-6594 or chat with them online at www.tks.la backslash nxt. We left it, Nathan, talking about you working with uh, Simpson Fasteners. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we worked there for about three years. Apparently, I'm not cut out to be working for a, like a corporation. It was, it, was, it was a big company. Again, I'd work for you. I worked for a company in Destin. 
there was no more than about five or ten employees in any of these jobs I've ever been in. And it just didn't work out. It just wasn't wasn't working. And between either one of us, I wasn't very happy, and they weren't very happy with me. So I, got, they want? I, I got let go. They, yeah. Uh, so that was... That so was now, you're, now you're a, a dad with three kids... That's that's gut wrenching. Yeah, you know, I'm, and, and I'm your not patient. used to. I'm not used to, for a lot. I'm not used to failure. You know, I've, I've done pretty well in everywhere I've been. You know, yeah. I've good relationships with all my former employers, and you know, so it was, it was kind of a that was a tough that was a that was a tough few weeks uh, trying to figure out what to do next. So, yeah. you know, now I'm certain I, you know, hit the newspapers and the monster dot coms and all the things to look for new jobs and. Finding things to look for or to apply for, but nothing was yeah. jumping out. It was I mean, still was, a tough time, it right? Was, it, I mean, and this is, yeah, right. I mean, this is all kind of, I guess we were kind of coming out of the little recession there, but it was still kind of slow, you know. Yeah. Uh, I guess hiring hadn't really picked up huge at that point, but um, I was just, for a few weeks, you know, maybe a few months, I was miserable trying to find a job that I didn't even really want to do, you know. Yeah. One Saturday morning, I can remember it very well. Saturday morning, Tanya walks into the house and she just says, "Just open your own company." And I'm like, "What do you mean? Like, I'm not a business owner. I've only worked for other people, you know, all my life. My parents have worked for other people. Nobody's ever really run a company in, in anybody that I've ever really known. But I've learned enough from my yeah. former employers to to kind of figure it out. But I still didn't know what the heck I was going to do. Really, right. and she said, "Oasis no, Spaces," and I'm like. What does that mean? She was like, I don't really know exactly, but it, it seems as though like you can like you like things to be you know pretty like have your own oasis. When I when I worked in Florida and built you know multi million dollar beach houses, that was people's you know refuge. Yeah, you know, and I'm um, thinking, well, I don't have any money to build a houses yet, but you know, like an outdoor kitchen would be something that they can people could act as their refuge. You know. But I still wasn't sure, like, what on earth was going to happen. Like, I, I, a lot of doubts. We'll put it right, that way. right. <laughs> and then, uh, so, so I was Saturday. Uh, Sunday morning, we go to church. We go to Healing Place, and Pastor Mike was giving a sermon about favor. At some point, he was saying, there's somebody in the room that needs to hear this. You need to open that construction company. Ty and I were standing next to each other, and I grabbed her leg, and we looked at each other like, did he just say that? Are you kidding? And I'm like, uh, just frozen. Like, it did, like there's, there's no way that just came out of his mouth. Oh, my goodness. You know? And so we walked out of there almost like zombies. Like, I cannot, you know, the uh, the, the, the lightning bolt from your head, you know, yeah. goes straight to your head and goes, okay, I I guess that was our sign. That's like, our here's, sign. Here's your sign, you know. Yeah. You know, we just kind of kind of in a daze the rest of that day. It's Sunday, you know. Monday morning, she left to go to work. I went ahead and I opened up the company account. I mean, I went to the bank. I went to, uh, got, on the, got on the website, opened up the LLC, filed all my papers, got my tax ID number, did the whole deal. And uh, she got home. She was like, so, you know, you all right? You know, how, how, how was your day? I was like, well, I got good news and bad news. The good news, I started a company today, you know, like we talked about, and um, bad news is that you got to go sign for a truck for me because I don't have any, <laughs> any way to do this work. <laughs> so next day we went to go buy a truck, and off we went. Oh, that is what a great <laughs> story. I love the fact oh, yeah. that, that Tanya came up with a name before That's even a, you knew what you were going to exactly do. Exactly right. So you right. grew a company into the name almost. Right. I mean, completely kind of the opposite of the way you would think it's supposed yeah. to happen. But, but so, you know, and, and thinking of it, it was like, you know, what is your oasis? And it's, you know, wherever you're happy, yeah. you know, and it's, it, it was, it was like it started off as just outdoor spaces and that led into really quickly going into pools. So how did you get your first show? I got my logo and I got my business cards. I took them to barbecue guys down the street, Shopper's Choice. And just dropped it off and say, yeah, I'm, I'm building outdoor kitchens if y'all have anybody you, you, know, you know of. And within a week or so, somebody had called me. And it was a small job. I'm talking sure. like a $5,000 job or something like that. I think yeah. the grills cost 3000 of it. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it just just working on my tools and, and, and doing what I could. Uh, that was my first job. I had 
a couple of like friends and family had some little little small remodel kind sure. of kind of little deals like a pergola or something like that. Small like actually my first job. And so that's how it started. A little small little you small. You remember your first big job? Yeah. 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 I um um it was a it was a backyard remodel. Um actually my cousin had kind of I was doing some landscaping for a guy and kind of got involved and said, you know, recommended me to just get, you know, put a bid in for, for doing a, the construction part of the, uh, the outdoor kitchen. And, uh, it was a, you know, it went from, like I said, maybe like five and $10,000 jobs to like a $200,000 job. Oh, wow. I was like, wow. You know, like you're right. That was at that time. That was huge. That's big. Dude. That was, that was, that was a, that was a big jump. From, yeah. from point A to point B. That was my first big job. And it was awesome. It's still on my website. It's on the back of my business cards. Cause I, I, I want to remember it, you know. It yeah, like yeah, my, that's my first cool, cool You know, job. My, my first big job, it was a uh, an addition to a house. And I had to go make this presentation. I'd worked all night on the estimate. And I had a meeting set up. And I jump in my truck. And I realize I'm totally out of gas. <laughs> right? So I jump across the street. I drive across the street. That gas station was like the last gas station in Baton Rouge to put on the brake free, uh, the, the hoses. The, right. And it didn't have a credit card, you know. And at this point, most gas stations had credit cards. And so I had to, and so I, I go, I put the uh, hose in the truck, I go to pump in, and I'm like, oh, man. You know, they, they don't take credit cards. And so I had to run in there. There's a line, and, and I'm, I'm going to be late, you know. And the line was going slow. I finally get up there. I give the guy 10 bucks to uh, turn on the pump. I was so panicked about being late for this meeting that I just ran and I jumped in my truck, and I drove off. Well, the hose was in my truck, <laughs> and he had just turned on the pump. And the hose was not a break free hose. Right. And and the hose snapped and it caught on fire. And the gas is pumping out of <laughs> the gas pump. And it turns into this huge flame that just more and more gas is just feeding on. And it just grows into this massive flame and encompasses over the canopy. Right? It's this massive fly. It's like 50 (laughs) feet tall. And I pull up, and I'm like, oh, my God, what have I done? And so now I'm stuck. I have to wait there. Right. Right? And they have to turn off the power to the building to have an emergency shut off to shut off the pump. And a sheriff comes, and, you know, I got to sit there and wait. And as soon as I can get out of there, I get out of there. I still have no gas in my truck. <laughs> still need <your> gas. <laughs> but I couldn't. I couldn't. I drove to the meeting just like after having been through that Fire. panic, <laughs> you know, I'm going to the meeting and I'm like, I'm going to go in there and just blow this. I'm so wired just out from this crazy right. experience. Uh, but I made my presentation and I got the job and I had a contract with them and they signed it. And that gas station ended up because they had to shut off their power, they lost all their frozen product, right? And they mm-hmm. had to, they had to, they sent me a bill for like seventy thousand dollars for all their ice cream that melted, and and I sent it to my attorney. And from that point on, the my attorney called me Torch. <laughs> Every time I call, hey Torch, I'm okay, like, your nickname. Okay. yeah. So um, we might have to cut that story out. No. Okay, I also like that one. I'll do it. Um, so, but those first big jobs, like, are memorable, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. like you said, it's on the back of your um, business card. How did your business grow from there? Did you have a slow build, or did things start to pick up nicely at that point? Well, like I said, to me, I feel like when you're living in it, it's yeah. slow. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like yeah, that. The, the the next two hundred fifty thousand dollar job didn't come around for a while. Yeah, you yeah, know? but it, uh, it it did, you know, teach me some things, and you know, now I'm kind of trying to grow into this niche and more construction, and very quickly, for, you know, like I said, I was probably six months into it, so I realized right very quickly I need to start learning how to build pools. So I got my pool license. Okay, so tell me how that started. Did you 
did you feel you needed to build pools because you're doing this work and you're seeing some right. solo pool guys come in and you're like, okay, I need to. Well, I basically, to yeah. That. So I went and got my my contractor's license, right? Uh, you know, in case something would come up that was big enough, like like that was. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm building these you know outdoor spaces again, decks, patios, pergolas, those kind of things, and. Customer calls me and said, you know, I'm going to get a pool too. So I'm like, as the manager, the, the contractor, I had to hire a pool company. Well, what's the, you know, uh, you do that once or twice, you realize, well, their portion of the job is bigger than my portion of the yeah. job. So like, you know, uh, so I learned really quickly how to build a pool. And uh, when I got my pool license, started advertising that. And within the next month or so, I had my first pool job. And uh, kind of just one at a time, maybe two, and then went to, you know, two in a year, three in a year, four in a year, up to nine in a year. Really? And I think last year we ended up doing 20. No. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's fantastic. And so are those pool and outdoor kitchen combos, some of them? That's or? where it's kind of growing, too. Yeah. That's what it's kind of growing to. But the uh, thing is, when, when you look at some of the images of the pools that you're building, those things are paradises. Man. Mm -hmm. So what is, uh, what's a high end on a pool, a pool or an outdoor kitchen? I know it can go crazy, but yeah. like what, what have you, what have you seen? I mean, what have you done? It's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, how much does a car cost right. or how much does a house cost? Right. You know, how much does a pool cost? It's the same thing, you yeah. know. It depends on how big. How but many I mean, how big? How big can those projects get? Oh, very. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I think my biggest has probably only been right around the two hundred thousand dollar range for yeah. a pool. Pool only, you know. That's pool that's a, that's but a nice that's, pool. That's a pretty good size. Pretty nice one. Yeah. yeah. I'd say the average job, at least nowadays, now that the prices of it going up so much, you know. Right under a hundred, you know, between like eighty thousand, you know, something like that. But yeah, it could be fifty, and it could be two hundred fifty, yeah, real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're so beautiful. I was just, I was thinking about that first pool job, because I mean, you know, you're digging a big hole in somebody's backyard, and mm -hmm. it, I mean, there's there's liability there. But oh, yeah. did did you sleep? Did you sleep during this that first pool? I haven't slept in nine years. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're an entrepreneur then. It, yeah, no, it's, yeah. The first, uh, for sure, the first one. Yeah, the first, yeah, okay, the first ten. You know, it's like I had to be on site every single minute, every yeah. single, every single day. Somebody was there. Every, you know, I was. I just spent my time just sitting there watching. Like I said I learned how to do it. But I still had to learn how to do it. You exactly. know, I had to be on site. I still had to see every single thing yeah. being done from start to finish, and but just I, make sure that you know. Not only do they're doing it the way I want it to, but they kind of also learning what they're doing to make sure that I can tell what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, yeah. so uh, I've mentioned this on this uh, podcast before, but re referring to a quote by Richard Branson that says, you know, if a client asks you if you can do something, the answer is yes. Yes. And then you go figure out figure how to do later. it. Right. So <laughs> did you uh, did you have those scenarios? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. You know, I try to be honest. You know, sometimes I'm sometimes I may be too honest and say, "Look, look, I've never done it before, but I'm gonna figure it out." Yeah. You know, I, I, or you know, you surround yourself with people, you know, right. subcontractors, uh, right. you know, whatever that uh, that that's maybe done that before. So you go to those guys and say, "Can you do? That? Can we do this together? You know, show me, tell me, look, give me a little background how this is gonna work. You know, in, in your experience, you know, or you might have to talk to another pool builder or something like that, another contractor." Nathan, it seems to me around that time, maybe a few years before, there was it was it was difficult to find enough quality pool builders. There were obviously quality pool builders, uh, and then there were some that were not. And I just remember hearing in the marketplace, you know, the need for more quality pool builders. Right. So it seems to me like when you got in the business, it was probably pretty good timing. For that, I don't know what that market's like now. If they're right. enough or not, but um, is that same right? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, 
I find that there's like kind of categories and groups of yeah. pit builders. There's super high end. Right. There's the guys who want to do better than most, you know, do their job and do a nice, right. clean, you know, well thought out job. And then there's the guys that maybe just trying to turn and burn, you know, yeah. and, uh, the number of pool builders, I'll say, has certainly increased yep. in the last few years. Seems like everybody can do it. And I started laughing because, hell, I was one of those guys. Sure, sure. Well, heck, I can, I can do that, right? So that's kind of how it all started. But, yeah, there's even still, you know, there's enough, there's enough business out there to support the amount of builders we have. But, yeah, I hear all the bad stuff, of course, being in the industry, so – Oh, for I, sure. I, I know, I know, you know, who's coming and going and you know, how long they're going to last and it's, it's going to happen. You forever. know, what's good to see about your product is uh, the level of de- design sophistication mm-hmm. uh, that you and Tanya have bought to, you know, the, the backyard environment right. and uh, just, again, just such good looking stuff. So, now you've also done renovations have, and yeah, additions. Right. I know you did uh, a very nice renovation. I recommended you to my brother, mm-hmm. and you did a beautiful addition to his home. It's uh, it's really turned out exceptional. But you've done more of that as well, right? We've done a few. You know, like again, it's it's pretty much just been me, and then it became me and Tanya. And now I also have a superintendent. But, you know, the company is not necessarily set up to be doing work in somebody else's home while they're living there. They all subcontract, you know, 99% of the stuff we do. So sure. sending subs into somebody else's home is not necessarily, in my opinion, the you know, best way to go about things. Uh, that particular one was, you know, basically a, a gut and remodel and add on. And it was, it was, it, it was uh, a lot to it. You know, yeah. so yeah, it was Very it involved. was it was a construction project for yeah. sure. Oh yeah, for sure. So uh, they they um they didn't move in until you'd finished, correct. I guess. Yeah. Correct. So yeah, we've we, you know we've done a couple little re- small remodels just here and there for basically friends and family kind of things, but I wouldn't say that remodeling is is, is yeah. a huge part. Now I'll say that you know an out of a kitchen an outdoor kitchen add on could be adding on to the outside of sure. the house sure and you can consider that a remodel you know so yeah we do do a lot of those though we would like to thank mbd automation for their support of the next entrepreneur podcast mbd automation is a mechanical install contractor with a program centric focus so what do these guys do they install conveyor systems vrcs platforms singulators sorters and all sorts of other types of automated equipment. Who do they work for? They work for systems integrators, manufacturers, and end users in fulfillment centers, airports, mail processing facilities, and projects in the defense industry. MBD Automation works for numerous Fortune 500 companies across the United States and has a list of international clients that they perform work for in the U.S. as well. If MBD Automation can help you on your next project, you can find them online at mbdautomation.com. This podcast is sponsored by Mayhall Fondren Blaze, a Louisiana business litigation firm offering sophisticated legal advice that is tailored to meet the needs of their individual clients, including a wide variety of litigation, complex business negotiations, corporate formations, closings, and title examinations. As leading entrepreneurs, your valuable time and resources should align with the expertise of MFB, a Louisiana practice made for business. Learn how we can work with you at www.mfbfirm.com. Could you or your business benefit from a comprehensive financial plan? Our sponsor, Centura Advisors, is a locally owned firm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana that specializes in personal and business financial planning, tax planning, corporate retirement plans, and investment management. We provide an all-in-one wealth management service so busy business owners like you can take back your valuable time. Visit www.centura-advisors.com to learn more. Centura Advisors, 
it's time to plan your future. Nathan, you started home building, right? right? How do you, how do you get into that? Well, come to find out, it's pretty tough to do just to shoot out of the gate and just start building houses. You know, my record back in Florida, I built $25 million worth of houses, Right. you know, but it doesn't necessarily translate when you come back to Baton Rouge and say, hey, sir, can I build your house for you? Right. You know, and well, what other houses have you built? And you're like, well, right. we got to take a six hour drive, you know, out east to go, to go look at them. Right. Best way I can figure to do it is just going on a limb and build my own house. Came up with a great set of plans and it was basically built to be a show house. And I mean, it, it is. A, my we, goodness, what a beautiful together, home. You know, got a design, good architecture, put an office in the front of it so people can come into my office without going through the house. We thought out all the things, how to walk around the house without going through the house to get to the backyard. We put in the pool, the outdoor kitchen, show those things off. Oh, so, so customers can come in, you know, and I'll have a showroom kind of, you know, mini showroom set up, a little mini conference table set up in my office, in my house. Um, and then, like I said, the outdoor kitchen, backyard, you know, the pool, backyard space. So if somebody's coming in to look at that, you know, I can bring them into the office. We'll put it on the TV, show them, you know, what their pool is going to look like in 3D. Walk around the back, show them my pool, my outdoor kitchen, kind of get some ideas for some people. But the house itself, you know, and then, again, if you want to show show somebody your, a, a home that you've built, you know, you put those pictures, you bring them into the house. You yeah, know, and this say, is okay, it. Look, you know, this is, this is mine. I can do it for you, too. So that's how you have to, that's how at least, that was at least the best way I can think of to start. Dude, that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant because you're, you're, you're putting all three there. Right. You know? Right. Uh, that is fantastic, man. And, man, did you start out with a beautiful home. My goodness. Mm. Now you have something to sell. Now right. you have something tangible, right? Yep. So I remember you and I spoke a few years ago, and maybe it was before you built your home, but you and I talked about doing some home building together. Right. We, we started looking at lots and things and, you know, how we could grow that. And it was probably more production that we were thinking of at that time. Right. And you, you've gone, we, we couldn't find something that made sense. And I think what I told you was, you don't need me. The, I, you're going to do this on your own. I could see where you had, what had you, what you had already built. I said, the only thing I think I can do is help expedite it some. Right. And I remember kind of showing you a graph, like I can maybe get you there a little faster. I think once I told you that, I don't think you ever called me again. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I, again, I only know how to build pretty high end homes. I got, I, I don't, my specialty is not track spec yeah. built houses. Yeah. You know, I just, I don't know how to necessarily make a cheap house, right. you know? Yes, it can be done. Yes, I can go lower materials. Yes, I can get, I, I got the idea. Sure, sure. But like, that's not where my eyes are drawn. Yeah. I'm looking at, you know, the way I would want to live in a house or like I compare to yeah. the houses I built in Florida. Like that's what, that's the standard yep. for me. Yeah. And so, you know, trying to do, you know, smaller track, quick, you know, isn't necessarily like where my headspace is, yeah. you know. So what has changed in home building from back when you first started in Florida? What what has changed about the the process? I mean, I think of like technology right. and these homes. Well, maybe between Florida and here, the the major differences in those are just like the code issues so yeah. like in florida you know high wind zones you know everything's impact really glass and pilings on the beach and it was, it was certainly different uh structural you right, know right. components that need to be done there i'm thinking as, i'm thinking more about how people live in their homes mm -hmm. how that may oh, have yeah. transitioned i mean i'm yeah. seeing like these open floor plans right. and again so beautiful uh, inside these homes, they've transitioned over the years from being, you know, purely functional spaces to being like oasis spaces, right? right? So even even when I was, in the last nine years or ten years, the idea of an outdoor kitchen had just started. So like everybody at that point, you know, having an outdoor kitchen was kind of rare, you know. So I think over the first you know, ten years ago, 
five years ago, the addition of an outdoor kitchen was, you know, almost like necessary. Since COVID, uh, home office is is almost no, you know necessary to have. So every right. every house now, you got to have an outdoor kitchen and a home office. When ten years ago, even I don't think, you know, probably didn't have either one. So people are living in their homes. Yeah. You know, like I said, the Oasis Space's idea is whatever your Oasis is. So it's, you know, it's, it's well focused on living in your home all the time. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily you can't take vacations and travel, but people are, want their home to be their oasis. Yeah. And that's, you know, you want to have that pool, that outdoor space, take the inside out, take the outside in. Yeah. Um, have the office so you don't necessarily have to go to the office every day. You can do work from home now. So all these little things, you know, kind of keep adding into um, the way homes are being built now. Yeah. We, we've talked with a, a few home builders uh, on the podcast and, and, and how COVID drove design changes. Like you mentioned, mm-hmm. you know, home office and um, things like that. I was curious in your business, did, did COVID increase, help increase pool sales like people right. not able to go to the club yeah. anymore and yeah. did, was that a noticeable uptick there is a thing called covid pools now it's it's, it's it's like a terminology in the in the in the industry now so really certainly yeah like i said we, we doubled our pools from year over year um basically when covid hit there was about a two-week period when like that march 2020 where we really Everything just kind of stopped. Right. I mean, nobody knew what was going to happen. No yeah, one nobody. We, I, was, I was getting nervous. You know, I didn't know if another pool was ever going to be built. And then the floodgates opened, and we've been 100 miles an hour ever since. Um, oh, yeah, certainly many, many more pools have been built in the last two years because of COVID. Again, the stay-at-home mentality, you know, not maybe we won't be going on vacation this year, but at least we can have a – Pool in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, there's there's a few things that happened because of COVID as well, and supply chain mm-hmm. uh, issues be- became a thing and became real for sure. Has that impacted your business a lot? Yeah, yeah. yeah for those couple of years, you know, again, revenues going up, the, the amount of pools or buildings going up, but the durations are taking longer. You know. Prices are fluctuating, so I might quote somebody now, and then by the time I actually get to build the pool, the prices have already gone up. Right. Basically stuck with the bid already. My contract's already signed. So, yeah, there's a lot of, like, spinning your wheels just to keep up yeah. with, you know, trying to get, you know, you start ordering materials when you start the pool versus, you know, a week before you need the materials, the pool equipment, for example. Right. Uh, same thing in the home building industry. We're ordering appliances when i pour a slab we're building a house around a refrigerator <laughs> so you just have to kind of adjust with it you know? it's crazy? like you you start doing things that are just out of the ordinary you know you get used to knowing that you need a refrigerator two weeks from now you order a refrigerator two weeks from now well then you're waiting for it for six months right you know so we've gotten we've gone through you know kind of getting burned a couple of times and learning from it and saying, okay, from now on, we're going to stay ahead of the curve. We're going to order everything on day one yep. and just stay ahead of it. And that way, at least the materials and supplies won't hinder us. Prices might change, but at least, you know, they, uh, we'll, we'll have the material when it's ready to go. Yeah, it, it's really crazy. It's really crazy uh, how that supply chain has been impacted so much. Mm-hmm. And you just wouldn't think it, but, the other two things I want to talk about is inflation. You, you just touched on that a bit. How that impacts your your business through sales. I mean, as as prices have increased, mm-hmm. your cost of your projects, everyone's projects go up. Are you seeing people capped out and saying, I'm just not going to spend that much on a pool? Yeah. Unfortunately, just this year, I've lost two jobs that I already had contracts on, basically. Two, yeah, two customers, we, as we're going along, just said, you know, it's just too scary right now. Yeah. And basically, I got to pull out. And yeah, so, so I mean, you, know, you, we're watching you can the prices see. prices go up every single day, and they don't know when it's going to end. Yeah. You know? 
So on, on you know on on your client side, you can they're taking the hits of their four hundred one k just like everybody else. Their business can be impacted just like many others, and then they can see the price go up on what they want to do and the money they want to spend. And if they're financing it, then that that next question I was going to raise is about the interest, interest rates, rates, right? Yeah. So right. and now it costs more to borrow that money. Hmm. Clearly, that's going to pull some some people back but look that's what the increased interest rates are designed to do is designed to slow down the economy it's designed to get people to pull back right what's interesting is we have to have the federal reserve do that to us or for us right to get us to adjust our spending habits mm-hmm. when we all have the ability to say you know what that car that I like over there, they're asking $10,000 over sticker. Mm-hmm. Guess what? I'm not going to even consider buying that car now right. because I'm just helping fuel inflation right. by doing that. It's interesting in that all these things are happening in the economy. It's that inflation. It's that interest rate that's, that's designed to tamper inflation it's really a good thing, right? You know, um, and so that's what's going to help us control inflation, get things back to normal. Right? And they never are going to go down. Costs are never going to go down as quickly as they went up. Hopefully, we're heading in the right direction. Our inflation numbers were a little uh, higher than expected yesterday, right. and this is being recorded in mid September. But you know that impacted the markets. But all those things happen. But it it seems to me. Uh, we're reading this a lot. There's still a lot of liquidity in the marketplace. Right. And I'm guessing that your two canceled projects have been replaced. They are being replaced. Yes. They are being replaced. They are, they are, yeah. the, you know, in general, the Baton Rouge home market is still good. Yeah. You know, there's still, there's still supply and demand, you know, so there's still not quite as many houses as there are, you know, buyers. So by all accounts, and I've been, I went to a Home Builder Association meeting last week that kind of dealt with this. And yes, they do expect the interest rates to go up a little bit more, but it's, so it's got to get worse before it gets better. But then when it comes back down, it's going to level out, you know, everything's going to be going back to normal. And that's, I, I yeah. think that's the the idea, just get it back to something reasonable because things yeah. are skyrocketing so fast. Yeah, that, you it know, really has that, been, it's been unhealthy in that respect but you know the thing that i think about interest rates and is that when people pause on a project like that they're putting that aspect of their life on hold if they have the sense that yes it's it's going to get worse before it gets better as you just suggested but i do think that it is going to get better Mm -hmm. uh, at some point in the future you know that the opportunity to finance a project is there and then the ability to refinance it when rates go down is there as well. Right. So it's not like a 20-year commitment at a higher rate. So um, I don't know how many people subscribe to that theory. I, 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 I haven't executed on that theory myself, but um, I can see where some might, you know. I wanted to talk to you about your business growth because it's really interesting. I think of businesses growing in a, in a number of ways. First is when you grow your line of business. So let's say you started in outdoor kitchens and you continue to expand on mm-hmm. that, right? So that's one form of growth. The second uh, is when you grow your services. Mm-hmm. So in your example, from outdoor kitchens to pools to residential, and you've been doing that successfully. So you're growing in those two ways. A third is expanding markets, have you and Tanya had uh, conversations when you look out longer term, uh, when you look five or, or longer years down the road? Do you have growth visions that carry you to outside this market? We're always looking for opportunities. Yeah. You know, so there's, and that's, that is how it's been growing, you know, again, from outdoor kitchens to pools to, even during the flood, I was doing, you know, flood remodeling. I never thought I'd be doing flood remodeling in my life. But you just kind of take what's what's kind of given at the at any given moment. 
but yeah, I mean, we've talked about doing some things like, you know, I know Tanya does, like I said, more our design work. So she liked to open it like a, you know, interior design store or like a type of a boutique where you can right. buy furniture and, you know, those kind of things. We're going to take what comes and uh, just keep pressing. Don't have any grand plans of moving out of the state or anything like that. I, I, we still want to be a local family-owned business. Right, right. You know, so we're we're, we're still, you know, like I said, we've, we've grown, but we still want to keep the family atmosphere. You know, we still want to keep it relatively small. Um, you know, I don't need to have a hundred jobs a year and, you know, employ 250 people. Like, that's not, that's not our deal. Right. But so, yeah, we, we're always looking for opportunities, whether it be more in the development side, you know, taking some land and, and modifying it and, and growing the infrastructure into it and building the houses there. That's just a shoot off of, of home construction. Yeah. You know, so we're always looking for something, you know, what our next steps are. We're thinking about some other things. Yeah. Know? Look, that's a solid plan. You know, I, I like growth, but I also like to hear when someone like yourself has a focus on their business and your plan's so solid. I mean, from how you've been growing it, the name, your branding, your social media marketing, the quality of your product, the sophistication of your product, uh, it's all just very well done. So, look, I Thank appreciate, you. Nathan, you coming in. It's a, it's, it's really a great thing for me to see a young man like you who I spent time with early in his career working together to see you achieve the level of success that you have and putting out the quality that you are and the way that you're doing it. So I'm super proud of you. Man. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate so, it. Yeah, thanks for coming in and uh, sharing your story with us. Absolutely. Thank you. I just love Nathan's story about he and his wife started the business. And I love how he's grown his business. Nathan said he's really interested in keeping his business manageable, family-oriented, and not trying to have a whole bunch of employees. He just wants to keep doing a good job. And I love that strategy as well. So I really appreciate him coming in. Uh, super proud of what he's accomplished in his business. And I appreciate you guys watching. So we'll catch you next time. We would like to thank our title sponsor, B1 Bank. They can be found online at b1bank.com. The Next Entrepreneur is produced by Propel Productions. You can find more information at propelyourstory.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Next Entrepreneur podcast and hit the bell for notifications. You can also follow us on social media. The links are in the description below.